early August and we've had a very nice mango season but right now we're getting into the last of the mangoes. Um, more than 90% of our trees are completely empty but we have uh, you know late season varieties so I wanted to talk about the late season varieties that we have now and you know what their year has been like what this season has been like for the late season ones um, this is kit of course uh, this is uh, one of our oldest trees and it's a reliable producer uh, a heavy producer too um, the thing that has been a factor this year for kit is mango bacterial black spot uh, it has ruined a lot of fruit has made them unsaleable these fruit look like they're fine so hopefully we'll have uh, some kit uh, fruit going forward for at least several weeks. Uh, one thing I just noticed is, is uh, right next door, Nam Dok Mai. It's been a very long season for Nam Dok Mai. Uh, this fruit does not look fully developed, but it is. there's still fruit hanging on the Nam Dok Mai trees. Um, next variety that comes to mind is Kent and Kent last year was uh, not a good year for Kent uh, part of the reason was that it was really hit by mango bacterial black spot this year it was very clean so uh, lucky us uh, lucky everybody uh, hopefully others who have those trees in their yards had a good year for Kent also um, we still have some Kent on the trees. Uh, Valencia Pride was a, it was a very different year for our, uh, that particular variety for us. Uh, most of our Valencia Pride trees had very little fruit. And the problem with that, of course, the problem is that we don't get as much fruit. But the other problem that's associated with not much fruit set is that all of the energy that the tree is making goes, or almost all of it, goes into growing the tree. And Valencia Pride is a big variety. You don't want it to grow even faster. It has more months to grow uh, when it's not producing fruit. So, we've tried to trim a little bit on those trees. Uh, I, I don't want to trim the fruit off, and it's hard to sort of be sure of each branch. Um, sometimes those, those branches are are very long and at the end of the branch there's some fruit uh, but we have tried to trim a little bit uh, because the trees have grown so much this year I I'm hoping that we have a good year next year but we do need to trim seriously after the fruit is gone we still have some Valencia pride fruit but the whole season has not been as good as it usually is um, Neelum uh, that's a probably our latest variety. Uh, we've run into a few situations with Neelum this year. Uh, of course, when there's a lot of fruit on one panicle, the fruit end up being very small. And there was several areas of the trees that had um, anthracnose on the skin, and that's not ideal. So uh, basically, our job at the end of Neelum season is to trim a lot of the branches to create some more air circulation, hopefully cut down on the anthracnose for next year. Uh, a sort of a, a surprise in the late season uh, was Promchymia. Promchymia had a lot of fruit this year and most of it was late. Uh, uh, Zillindo Chinese, another very late variety. Uh, we still have some fruit on the tree on that. Uh, it's uh, one of its progeny is uh, uh, Venus and of course we had Venus fruit this year. Our trees are small uh, for the Venus uh, fruit and so we didn't get tons of fruit but what fruit we got was it varied in size quite a bit. Uh, we had some fruit that were you know, they were huge and then Others were just very small, and uh, all of them tasted good. It was just, that was the most notable thing for me. It was the, the huge difference in size for Venus. Uh, had a great year for Palmer. 
Uh, there's still some fruit on the trees. There's actually two uh, crops that went on our one tree. Uh, it was uh, it was just loaded with fruit and we still have some. Last year was not a great year for Palmer. Uh, we just didn't have a lot of fruit. So uh, it's possible that next year, because it has produced so much fruit this year, uh, next year might be a light year. Uh, we'll hope that it's not, but that's been a nice variety. Uh, we have uh, the first year for Orange Essence. Uh, that's one of the new Gary Zill varieties. Uh, the fruit were delicious. Uh, we didn't have a lot of them, uh, but we did have, uh, I think it was an air circulation problem again with that particular tree. Uh, we had a lot of black spots, anthracnose on the orange essence, and so a lot of them were not saleable because of that. Um, we had honey kiss. <laughs> so honey kiss uh, is a, a very nice, sweet, late season fruit that unfortunately the squirrels really appreciate. Uh, we lost a lot of fruit to the squirrels. We have um, you know, two trees that are near the fence and it was just very easy access for them. Uh, I got to taste like the other half of some of those fruit and uh, yeah, very, very nice. Uh, the latest one that came down, I tried tasting the other half and evidently the squirrels are truly desperate because uh, that was really underripe, so um, it's just the way it goes. But yeah, uh, Honey Kiss had a, had a pretty good year considering the amount of, of um, uh, space it has in the grove. Uh, M4 is a nice late season variety. Uh, it's a little coconut flavor, no fiber. Unfortunately, the places that we have it grafted did not uh, fruit, but I mention it because it's definitely a late season variety to uh, consider. Uh, interesting thing, uh, I grafted all sorts of Julie uh, and Julie relatives on a big Hayden, Hayden tree. And, uh, you know, the Julie and Juliet have been fruiting for a while. Uh, Super Julie was something I added more recently, and uh, it surprised me. Uh, this year, even though it's very young, uh, we had quite a few Super Julie fruit, considering how many old branches that we had. Uh, and the thing that uh, is also interesting to me is the season appears to be later than Julie and Juliet. So you still get some of the Julie flavors uh, with a little bit larger fruit. The skin's a different color, uh, but it's um, another one to consider for late season. Uh, and then we had exactly one fruit that was produced by O15. Uh, that's also a variety that I've recently grafted, uh, you know, top worked it onto part of the Chocanon tree. And unfortunately, we were not able to taste it. I found it on the ground. I wasn't even aware that there was a fruit on the tree uh, because there's just so many leaves in that area. Uh, but it's going to be a, a later season fruit also. Um, you know, I just found that the other day. So uh, let me see if I've covered them all. Uh, I don't think I mentioned Beverly yet. And that's sort of the perfect one to end with. I didn't mean to uh, end with it, but it is, uh, you know, it's just a really good late season fruit. Uh, it's been around for a while, and we started picking that probably a month ago. Most of the trees are, you know, where most of the fruit on the trees are finished, but it's still got fruit. Uh, it's it, it was a really nice year for Beverly and it's just, you know, if you're, if you're talking a late season fruit collection, uh, you know, Beverly should be one of those trees.
So in addition to the trees we have growing in the grove, uh, sometimes potted plants like this one produce fruit while they're still in the pot. This is Lil Gem and this tree along with a seven gallon Lil Gem that we have made a fair amount of fruit. Uh, this all came from this one tree and it still has a couple of fruit on it now. So Lil Gem was not something that was an urgent variety for me to top work into the grove but because I saw so much fruit and it's late season, it's definitely going to have a place in the grove.